think the dialogue at the conference has really highlighted even more issues about differentiation and clarity to the B2B consumer and buyer and the B2C infrequent but experiential traveler. Well, that's right. If you look at the operating metrics, the, the longer average length of stay at service departments and apart of hotels leads to lower void periods, higher occupancy rates. ADRs seem to be sort of give or take five or ten percent, plus or minus the same sort of level as hotels. They're much more efficient to operate, lower staff body. Uh, GOP margins are often 10, 15 percent above what hotels are able to achieve. So ultimately, on t in terms of profitability, there's a strong story there. Uh, bringing it back to construction costs, they tend to be slightly more affordable, slightly lower capex requirements than a comparable hotel scheme. And as such, the returns on, in uh, on investment are pretty strong. Our indicative model showed an IRR sort of two or three percentage points above a uh, like-for-like -like hotel project. Technology for uh, service department needs to be a lot more, uh, let's say, customizable. Uh, it needs to be uh, completely um, uh, flexible um, and also scalable because especially with, with a sector that is actually growing uh, very, very fast, it needs to be able to, to cope, um, of course, with multi-property but as well with multi-currency because a lot of, of the major operators are looking to expand, uh, uh, for example, in areas like the Middle East uh, but I mean in Europe, uh, certainly everywhere. Uh, talking on this side of the world. Um, so, it's, uh, so you need really a system that is, is, is able to, uh, to, 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 to grow with all of that. Yeah, we are um, talking at the moment quite extensively, certainly in Europe, um, with other trade bodies that are interested in uh, partnering in the programme. Um, so we're in the process of creating another entity called the International Service Department Accreditation Programme. Um, and that vehicle, ISAP, will be the vehicle that owns the accreditation programme effectively, affiliated to ASAP. Um, and that will be the vehicle that licenses the programme in different parts of the world. Um, our assessment team have just come back from North America and Canada, where they've been assessing 20 operators over there in Toronto, um, Calgary, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York and Dallas. Um, so it's really gaining some momentum at the moment, which is fascinating. First of all, I think what the Service Department Summit London has done is provided a platform to launch, you know, a service apartment into a global audience, which is probably the less understood as a class from a touristic point of view many operators, suppliers and, and the customer itself. So, you know, the London Summit uh, provided the platform and London, Dubai and New York are probably the key hubs for the aviation industry and, and the corporate uh, life. So, the service apartment is very important for the business segment and, and therefore Dubai and the Middle East plays a very key role in, you know, as a destination and as a hub for uh, the corporate market and uh, the current supply of service apartment is very large you know year on year to 2014 grown by 24 percent and uh, even the performance grown by 5.4 percent so all the key performance indicator shows the potential for growth is phenomenal there's a clarity that and a willingness to accept the fact that we are part of a hospitality ecosystem. Is, they, these are giant leaps in a very short period of time. Capital is sitting at the table, the advisory groups are sitting at the table, the broader operating groups that are, might be small or large are sitting in the same room. That's, that's tremendous advancement. The fact that there's confidence to have a service department sector conference in Dubai, now announced in New York, that the message is truly getting connected across key cities, Dubai, London, New York. That's a real conversation. <music>